Welcome to Angel Speaks. Today I'm going to talk about how to leave a toxic relationship. It is not going to be something that is going to be um, easy in any way. It's going to be extremely difficult to the utmost. So I'm not going to lie and say, oh, it's easy. Just, you know, pack your bags and then walk out. It's a process, it's, it's a step-to-step -step thing, so I'm going to get into that. Um, first of all, when you decide that you had enough, and you um, are very aware that it's very unhealthy, it's causing you so much stress on an ongoing basis, and, um, you know, enough's enough. Um, when you feel that, and maybe you have tried to leave um, multiple times, but you found that it was hard to deal and then you end up going back so now you're afraid that you feel like you're done but you're afraid what if I leave and I come back again I don't want that to happen how do I avoid that well um, first of all um, to know if you really are done you have to find something out um, first of all you have to be sure that everything this person is doing is a pattern that you are already aware of. So when they're trying to invoke an emotion out of you, which they will, because that's their MO, um, you need to stop reacting to their manipulations. If they say something just to get an emotion out of you, don't react to it. Don't even act like you heard what they said. You can just ignore it. Um, and every situation is different. If they're very, um, if they're physically abusive and you're scared they're going to hit you, hurt you in some way, be smart, obviously, um, keep the peace, so, you know, whatever you need to do to keep them happy, do it, but, um, one thing you need to do, please research first before you leave, research about toxic relationships, research about what you're going to go through afterwards, so you can be prepared, um, researching is key it's going to kind of help you awaken to the truth that you really are with someone that's unhealthy for you sometimes you know it but you still sometimes keep you're in a in a haze and you're like well what if you know what if it's just me what if this what if that you know because they seem good sometimes and and uh, but they always do this they always keep hurting me they, they don't listen they don't learn maybe it's just maybe they're good but you know they just struggle with certain things. Well, research about it. Look up toxic relationships. Look up abusive relationships. Look up manipulating, controlling, psychopathic relationships. I want you to Google all these things and read it until you memorize everything. Because I guarantee you, if you are in a toxic relationships, if you look up Toxic relationships, abusive relationships, controlling people, manipulative people, psychopathic relationships. Look up narcissism. Look up narcissistic abuse. I guarantee you these things are going to apply to you and you're going to read all this information like, wow, it sounds like my relationship. Um, but you need to read about it and you need to learn and um, understand the mind of your abuser. This, I found, helped a lot for me and a, a lot of people that I've spoken to that dealt with the same thing. It has helped them as well. Learn and understand why they are the way they are. It's going to also help you in your healing process. Uh, the best thing to do is to try not to take their abuse personal because it's not about you. It's about them. They treat you um, how they feel inside because of who they are. We react to people based on our characters. Some some people might seek revenge in a certain thing. Someone else might just not want anything to do with it and they just walk away from the situation. And those two actions, um, they could have both been through the same thing, but they both had choices to make. One chose this route, the other chose this route. So we react how we are. We can't blame others for how we react. So um, you need to understand why they are the way they are and um, really research about that. 
Get in their minds. Not Don't ask them a thousand questions. Don't do that because they're going to play along with the mind game. They're going to always bring everything to, to a game. And they're going to play with you um, and try to manipulate you in that. Don't talk to them about what you're researching. <laughs> don't do that. No one wants to hear you say, oh, yeah, I read about your issues and um, they don't want you to sound like a doctor they they obviously been treating you this way for a long time because they think it's okay so just because you say you look something up and you start talking to them about it to help them learn about it you really think they're gonna wanna listen to you you think cuz you gave them some new information that something's gonna click in their heads and they're gonna say oh wow I think I should change now it's not gonna happen don't do it um, and it might anger them um, and you don't wanna make them angry Keep the peace. Um, if you're trying to leave them, please keep the peace. Um, but research first and understand about toxic relationships more. You need to get yourself in the know because you've been in this um, entanglement for so long and they've confused you and played mind games and lied so much. Everything was so inconsistent that you need to really, really, really have a firm understanding and, and belief and stick to it so that you're not but what if, what if, what if, so that when you do leave, if they try to give you a sob story or whatever, you're not going to fall for it because you already know for a fact. You know what I mean? So researching is the best number one thing that you need to do if you're planning to leave. Really understand what, why they are the way they are, why they did that, um, you know, all, all that. Um, what, what you've been going through. Um, read other people. Read other people's stories. Look it up. And there's um, a lot of websites. There's even Facebook pages devoted to um, this type of abuse, you know, um, toxic relationships and all that. And they're all going to have very similar stories to you. Um, and that's one thing that you need. You need a support system. You need to know that you're not alone. Um, feeling alone is going to make this process way harder. <clears throat> um, so that is something that is very important because not everybody has a friend or a family member um, that's going to be there for them to be empathetic because they didn't go through what you did, so they're not going to really be able to help you out too much. Um, don't leave to get a reaction out of your um, abusive or toxic uh, significant other. If you're trying to get a reaction, that means you're not done with them. You know you're done when you don't care to get a reaction anymore. Um, you're leaving because you're, you want to save your sanity and you want to be in a healthy place. And so if you're trying to get a reaction out of them, you're not done with them yet. So you may as well just keep researching until you don't care about getting a reaction anymore. Um, stop participating in their mind games. When you know they're trying to manipulate you and they're acting sad about something, but you know they're not sad, you're already getting the idea that this is fake, it's a front. Um, don't participate. If they say something and they're questioning you on something, they, they want to get you to argue, Agree everything. Agree with them. Agree away. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're totally right. I know. I'm sorry. Keep it very peaceful. Um, a toxic person is not mentally sound 100%. Um, so trying to reason with them is a waste of energy and a waste of time. You're not going to get anywhere. So don't argue with them. Don't try to reason with them. They're going to keep, keep on trying to... Um, they're going to keep disagreeing with you, and the whole time is just going to be nothing but it's just going to bring you down, okay? It's going to be nothing but mixed emotions, frustration. Don't do it. Don't play, Don't be a part of the games anymore. Just stop participating. Um, don't provoke them. Keep the peace. Um, make a plan for your escape. Um, if you want to leave, plan it out. If you need to save up, don't tell them that you're planning on leaving. Make them think everything's okay. Save up on the side. <clears throat> um, whatever your plan needs to be, you do it on the hush-hush, on the DL. And um, because um, the worst thing you can do is, I'm going to leave you, but I got to save up money to move. So, you know. You know what I'm saying. You're going to be in for more abuse, worse, worse, worse. If they know you're trying to leave them, that's going to hit their ego very much. And they're going to make you suffer for it. They're probably going to be very, very um, 
show off you with talking to women and going out with them and all that stuff and you're going to suffer more because that hurts to see that you know you need to not be there when that's going on and um they may be very immature because they are immature so they're going to do things to try to hurt you even more and get you back um so don't ever tell them you're going to leave them if you if it's going to take time for you to move out or whatever the case be don't ever let them know what your plans are you do it on the on the hush hush okay uh, it's not, it's, you're not doing something evil, oh, you're being secretive, no, I'd rather be honest. Well, listen, you're not with a person that is a, a mature, healthy, sound person. You're with someone that's very toxic and has been hurting you for a long time. Why would you tell them you're going to leave if you can't leave yet? Um, so you plan for your escape. You, you make a plan and you stick it through and don't talk about it. You may not even want to talk about about it with anybody else unless you have someone or people that you trust that you know they're not going to say anything to anybody um, you know um, keep it um, don't reveal it but you do you know it's good to have someone that has your back and that you know that's going to be there for you so if you can trust somebody that you know they're not going to tell anybody that's okay you could tell someone but um, you know keep that as much of a secret as you can um, and then you plan to move out. Um, you now, if you're, they live with you and you're trying to kick them out, um, invite people over. Don't let them know. Invite people over and even have a cop come over. If you don't trust that they're going to, if you think they're going to be irate and abusive physically, have a cop come and just stay there and be present while they pack their things. And it sounds bad. I know it does. But you got to do what you can to be safe, you know? So do that. Um, also, um, but if you're trying to move out, you just don't even want to be there no more, whatever. Keep it a secret. Wait till they're at work or you know they're going to be somewhere that you're not going to be together. Um, wait till they leave. Start packing on the on the down low. Have things packed away somewhere that he's not even going to be able to tell. Just start, you know, little by little. But don't be obvious with it. If you need to put some things at a friend's house or at a family member's house, but make it so that they're not going to notice anything. Don't make this an obvious thing. Um, and then when they're at work one day or whatever, you move the rest of your things out. Don't let them know what's going on until you are out and until there is nothing in the house that you have to come back to get. <laughs> if you end up leaving something, you get a cop or somebody to go with you, obviously, to get it. But um, And then you can let them know when the coast is clear, when you're not there anymore. Um, leave a note for them. Leave a letter. Text them, call them, whatever you want to do. I wouldn't call them though. I wouldn't even text them. And here's why it's going to open yourself up to more abuse because they're going to talk down on you. They're going to try to make you feel guilty. They're going to blame you. They're going to do, they're going to cry and tell them, I'm so sorry, P. I'll never do it again. And they're going to do whatever they can. And, and even though you feel like you're done, you still have feelings there. It's going to take you a while to get over them. So you need to, um, don't let your heart be tugged don't put yourself in a vulnerable position so try not don't call you have to literally cut off all contact with them I would change or block their number change your number block whatever you need to do that you don't that there's no way you can talk to them and no way they can reach out to you leave them a letter somewhere or text them there's a letter explaining to you about the new situation it's right on the coffee table or whatever and um, have a nice day. God bless you. That's it. That's the last text you're sending them. You're going to block them from all the social websites. You're going to change your number or block their number from being able to text and call you. You need to help protect yourself any way that you can from being hurt further. Um, this healing phase is going to be another hurdle that you have to overcome. It's going to be very tough. And you need to make it as um, as easy as possible by avoiding more to bring you down. And, and cutting off that contact is going to help you um, get over this quicker. It's still going to take time. It's still going to be hard. But you need to cut that contact out. You can't continue to explain yourself. But why are you leaving me? But what did I do? It's because you keep doing it. Don't do that. Don't get into it. You got into that with that person for years probably. 
and you're already done. You don't need to explain anything. You know that they're not going to change and nothing needs to be explained anymore. So you cut them out your life. You can leave a little letter. Listen, I'm not going to repeat myself no more. Just, just to let you know, obviously I wasn't happy for a long time. I kept voicing that. You didn't care. So I'm done. So yeah, I packed all my things. I'm out. Um, I'm going to cut ties. You, you're not going to be able to contact me. Okay, so let's just make this as easy as we can. I love you. I care about you, but I'm, I love myself too and I'm, I'm leaving for myself to protect myself from harm so um have a you know take care of yourself okay that's all the letter needs to say you don't gotta go into you free you fucking bitch you hoe or you whore player dog how dare you i mean if you gotta say what you gotta say say it but i feel like all that is pointless because it's not gonna do anything but make them mad or, or whatever um it's not going to make them want to change. So it's kind of like you're just, it's overkill. So I feel like keep it short and simple, short and sweet, peace out. We never need to talk to each other again. It's a different story when you have kids with them. <sighs> so that's going to be tough. Um, but you have to really, really, really cut down that communication to no contact as best as possible. Do not be their friend. Just be cordial. If they're, ta if they're talking about the kids, keep it that's it. Okay, got to go. Bye. Do not let them have a conversation with you. Don't let it be something that they're trying to make it be because they want you to be in that position so they could control again and manipulate you again. So this is going to be something that it's going to be hard and it's going to take practice. But if you are firm with it and you keep practicing to do this, you're going to get better at it. And um, before you know it, you may even be at a peaceful place with them, hopefully. Um, but you're going to go through a lot before you get to that. And, and just know that this is just something that you have to go through. It sucks. It sucks that you have to deal with all this. But in the long run, I promise you, you're going to be in such a better place. You're going to be happier. If you love yourself enough to go through this, to get have a better life in the end, you're going to see it's so worth it. It's not worth it to be stuck in a prison where you're not happy and you're just physically becoming unhealthy because stress makes you sick, you you know, and you don't want to have to live a life like that where you, only when you drink, that's when you're happy. No, you know, um, you are the controller of your own destiny. You control, you make the decision for your life. You choose to be happy and you're going to go through a long journey to get to the happy place, but it's going to be very worth it. And you're worth it. You have to believe that you're worth it. Um, so, you know, if you ha do have kids with this person, it's going to be harder. But um, trust me, I know you're going to make it through. And it's going to get easier as time goes on. But it's going to be tough. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to cope with... Um, when you do leave, what you're going to go through, um, things that you probably didn't expect that you were going to go through. I'm going to get into that because it's, it's going to be a lot going on and it's going to be tough and you need to be prepared for what's going to happen. If you're planning and you're serious about leaving this person, you need to be prepared and know what you're going to go through and what this long process is going to entail. Um, and I'm going to go, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you um how to cope and what you're going to deal with so in the next video okay stay tuned thank you for watching